Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Santa Barbara Cal Soap Virtual College Fair. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A or the question and answer button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. I know there is one specifically in May. This presentation is being recorded and will be available after the May sessions, um, so feel free to check strivescan.com slash C-A-L-S-O-A-P. Um, thank you all for coming tonight, and I would now like to turn it over to our presenters. Awesome. First up, we have DigiPin Institute of Technology. Hi everyone, my name is Adele Karoom and I'm here from DigiPen and I'm just going to show a quick like 30 second thing that shows some clips of student work and then I'll do my presentation. switch over to my PowerPoint presentation. All right. Okay, so I am here from DigiPen Institute of Technology. Um, if you haven't heard of us before, um, we've been around for a while. We've been around since 1988. Our president and founder, Claude Comer, was a co-founder co of Nintendo Software Technology. Um, so DigiPen started, uh, which so DigiPen started as more of like a training program for people who were interested in learning game development, and then it grew into a private four-year college from there with four areas of expertise computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development, and music and sound design. Um, we're located in Redmond, Washington, just outside of Seattle. So it's a great area to be in just because you're in the Pacific Northwest. It's obviously very beautiful up there, um, but you have all access to all the resources of a city. So there are a lot of great opportunities, a lot of tech companies and a lot of game studios in that area as well for internships and then for if you're looking for employment in that area after graduation. Um, DigiPen was the first school in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming. We have 10 degree programs, eight are undergraduate and two are graduate. Our average class size is 20. Um, our graduates are credited on more than 1500 commercial video games. So if you look on our website, I'll put a link to it in the chat later, but there is a thing on alumni success. And so you can look at an A to Z list of all of the games that people have worked on. And I'm sure they are games that you've known and heard of and played. Um, and then also you can see a list of all of the companies that have employed our students as well. Um, we're ranked as a top five video game design school by the Princeton Review, and we have been for the last 11 years. Um, and our students receive a lot of awards um, for their animation project, projects and game projects. Um, our students have received more IGF awards, that's the International Game Festival, than any other school in the world. Um, and they also receive a lot of festival selections and awards for animation projects as well. So you saw some quick snippets of those in that little thing I showed at the beginning. But if you go on our YouTube channel or on our website, you can see a lot more if you want to see um, samples of student work. And um, these are our degree programs. We have a BS in computer science, a BS in computer science and machine learning. That's our newest degree program, just because there's so much growth in that area. If you think about if you're on Netflix or on social media, anything that relates to analyzing data um, and you know providing useful content to you based on your data or artificial intelligence, um, that would be um, a great degree if you're interested in those kinds of fields. Um, for game design and development, we have a BA in game design that is primarily design. Um, and then we have a BS in computer science and game design that is more computer science curriculum with some courses in game design. Um, we also have a BS in computer science in real time interactive simulation. And that is a lot of words. We call it RTIS for short, but that's really our flagship game development degree. If you're interested in getting into the higher levels of programming physics and a lot of math, that's a really good program. 
Um, we have a BFA in digital art and animation that starts with one year of traditional art, drawing, painting, sculpture, and then it goes into 2D and 3D digital art, and then 2D and 3D animation. And then for music and audio, we have a BA in music and sound design. So that includes everything from music theory, composition, um, but also sound design, sound effect creation, and sound tracking. And then the BS in computer science and digital audio is more of a computer science degree, but computer science, if you're interested in focusing specifically on programming of audio. Um, our academic approach is a combination of academic fundamentals and project-based learning. Um, unlike some schools where you declare a major a little bit later, at DigiPen you pick what you're going to study when you apply to the school and the application requirements are all a little bit different. Um, so you go directly into your program from your first year and take a pretty heavy course load, usually like 16 to 20 credit hours per semester. Um, and the result of that is that you get into some really professional type of projects um, in your later years. So third and fourth year, students work on ga game teams and animation teams, generally of about seven to 10 people, but sometimes larger, sometimes smaller. Um, and that's where they get to work on those great projects. So they graduate with often three to four professional quality projects so they can showcase their abilities as they're applying for jobs in, in, the, in the industry. Um, as you're preparing to apply for the BS programs, focus on math, science, and problem solving skills. Pre-calculus is required for many of our programs, but not all of them. So check out our website on that. Um, for the game design program, there is a portfolio. Um, you can check out our website, but it's basically writing essays about three things that you've designed. They're looking more for your design process than for um, your finished product. For the BFA, there's a portfolio. It's five prescribed pieces and then um, five to 10 additional pieces of your choice. And music and sound design has a portfolio as well, just showcasing your musical ability um, and your experience with music. So there is our contact information um, and I will put my individual contact information in the chat as well. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. We are going to be moving right along to UC Santa Barbara. So whenever you are ready, feel free to take it away. Awesome. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good afternoon, evening. My name is Robin. I'm a freshman admissions counselor here at UC Santa Barbara, and I am really excited to very briefly share with you all a few things that make this place so special. So UC Santa Barbara is a world renowned institution producing global research that is really spearheaded by our faculty. Six of our faculty members have won Nobel prizes in chemistry, physics, and economics. We are ranked as the number six public university in the nation, which marks our seventh consecutive year being in the top 10. So that is definitely a point of pride for us. We're also ranked for having the number one happiest students for a public school in California, which in my opinion is is very much likely in part due to our picturesque seaside location and our campus environment overall is very supportive. We have a ton of resource centers on our campus, tutoring, mentorship programs, tailored advising, health and wellness programs, and much more. Now, in terms of our student population, we are considered a mid-sized UC campus that is located about 90 miles north of Los Angeles with about 26,000 students. Of those 26,000 students, 23,000 are undergraduate students working on their bachelor's degree. And this means that there really is hardly any competition with graduate students to get research and internships. Now, in addition to that, we're actually the largest four-year institution with a 60-mile radius to the north and the south, meaning there really isn't much comp competition for our students with other students from other large four-year universities in the area for internships, job opportunities, and things like that. Now, UC Santa Barbara offers about 100 different majors and about 40 minors spanning dozens of disciplines, and they're structured across three colleges. Most of our students fall in the College of Letters and Science. It's our largest college, housing about 80 of our 90-ish, 100-ish majors, and it's really got everything. Hard sciences, social sciences, visual and performing arts, including the most popular major for incoming freshmen, undeclared. Now we have five majors in our College of Engineering, Computer Science, Computer Engineering, Chemical Engineering, Electrical Engineering, and Mechanical Engineering. And with a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio in this college, our engineering students have a lot of opportunities to work one on one or hands on with their professors, that world renowned faculty that we have at UCSV to get those research and internship opportunities. Lastly, our College of Creative Studies is a college for students who are really passionate about a particular subject. 
or maybe they want that long-term research or creative career. Students in the College of Creative Studies are now the ones that are expected to create new knowledge or to create new work. These students are working directly with faculty mentors, and while they're still going to class like every other student, they are spending a lot of time working on their own independent research projects or their own creative project. Now, if that sounds like you, you should apply to the College of Creative Studies. There really is nothing else like it in the UC system. Now, while we don't have a medical school or a law school at UCSB, we do have both a health professions advising as well as a pre-law advising program to really help prepare you for those careers. These programs have advisors that will help keep you on track academically, and they'll help get you the experiences you need, whether that be in the form of internships, research, or other opportunities. These programs work. Our students get into medical school or law school at higher rates than the national average, so that is definitely something that we are proud of here at UCSB. Now, before I talk about housing, I do want to be clear that the information I'm sharing with you is pre-2020. It probably comes to no surprise that given the pandemic, our housing situation does look different than typical. Now, I'm hopeful that we'll return to more on-campus living in the future, but I just want to be clear that this information is really based on what we've seen in the past and what I hope will return to sooner than later. At this time, there's no guarantee for this upcoming year. We are planning for fall quarter to be in person, but of course that's all pending county and CDC guidelines. Now, with all that said, because of our location, over 80% of our students live either on or within a square mile of campus. And this tight-knit community really creates the feeling that students don't just go to school here, but that their lives are here as well. If you want to see your friends, walk to them. It is seriously that easy. We have eight residence halls, Five of them are oceanfront property and six apartment complexes. So there are housing options for incoming freshmen as well as incoming transfer students. And because students live so close to campus, of course they love to be involved. Our students have created over 500 student organizations on our campus, everything from social to active, cultural, political, helping them stay connected, get leadership experience and build a strong network. And of course we do have our sports here at UCSB. Our highest level of competition are our NCAA teams, all 19 of which are top tier division one competition. We do have 27 club sport teams. So if you're looking for not as high of a level, but you still want to play in organized athletics, those club sports will definitely be right up your alley. And the most leisurely are intramural sports. And if you're not interested in any sort of organized athletics, then we do have our recreation center, which includes our multi-activity courts, swimming pools, a rock climbing wall, and more. Now, of course, here's a great page to take a screenshot of for your resources. And if you have any questions, please email UCSB for me at sa.ucsb.edu. And I will also include my email in that chat box. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Robin. That was wonderful. Um, we are going to be moving right along to Woodbury University. So whenever you're ready, Ashley, feel free to take it away. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for being here and thank you for having me. So Woodbury University is a small liberal arts institution located in Burbank, California, and it's a small institution about 20 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. And the great thing about uh, the location of Burbank is that it is home to many major studios, including Warner Brothers, Disney Studios, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and more. And this is really, really great uh, because of our internship programs. So the great thing about Woodbury is that you're going to get a very hands-on approach to learning. You're going to get a very hands-on and practical-based education and all of our students are required to have an internship before they graduate. And about 90%, and actually that I think in, did increase a little bit this year, 90% um, of our students are actually hired within six months of graduation. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for you to gain experience and to gain valuable skills before you enter the workforce. Um, we do, we are a small campus. We have about 1200 students and that is mostly undergraduate students. We do have a few graduate majors, but most of our majors are undergraduate. So a small campus means that you're going to have very small classes. So you're going to have an average class size of 15. Um, 
And, you know, for you, that's great because you get a lot of one on one attention from your professors, you really build relationships and you really build those connections with your professors and they are very easily accessible. So almost any time of the day, any day of the week, you can get in touch with your professors and you can have them um, for many years and they're just great connections. I'm going to talk a little bit about our majors. Our five nationally ranked programs include animation, game art and design, graphic design, architecture, and interior design. So our majors are broken up into four different schools at Woodbury. So we have the College of Liberal Arts, the School of Architecture, the School of Business, and the School of Media, Culture, and Design. And you can kind of see all of our majors, and I'm just going to highlight a few things particularly in our School of Architecture. Um, our architecture program, you actually will receive a Bachelor of Architecture. And it's great because you fast track your program and essentially you can become fully licensed, able to practice within five years of study at Woodbury. Um, our School of Business is one of actually one of the oldest business schools on the West Coast. We are fully accredited and we are one of the only schools with accreditation with a fashion marketing program. And that's just a great, a great major for students who are interested in the design and arts component as well as the business side and management and marketing as well. And then in our School of Media, Culture and Design, um, we emphasize a studio culture. So we try to kind of emulate what you would see in a real life studio world. And the great thing about these majors is that you have access to a lot of different studios and you're able to practice and you're able to gain valuable experience with all of these uh, majors. So our application requirements are pretty straightforward. Um, we do have a minimum GPA for scholarship requirements. We do require a digital portfolio for animation, and we do recommend it for graphic design. We are test optional, and that's, you know, that's going to be, we're going to stay test optional even uh, regardless of COVID. We do not require a personal statement or letters of rec, but I always like to highly recommend those because they're just an additional way that you can tell us about yourself, tell us about your goals, tell us about why you want to attend Woodbury. And then because we're a private institution, we actually, you out-of-state students and in-state students pay the same. So our scholarships are available for anyone who meets the GPA requirements, and these are just based on merit. So these are just based on GPA, and as long as you meet the GPA requirement, you automatically are guaranteed these scholarships. And the great thing about it is that it is, is renewable every year as long as you maintain a 3.0 GPA, and this is all unweighted GPA. And then we do have additional scholarship opportunities for anyone who wants. And obviously, once you fill out FAFSA, you can also have those scholarships. But these are additional scholarships provided by Woodbury. And the Social Justice Scholarship Fund is available, available for first generation college students, um, students of color, underrepresented minorities, students within the LGBTQ community. So we highly encourage students to apply for those, as well as School of Architecture scholarships and MBA scholarships. So if you're still interested, you can please feel free to jot down my information. Um, that's my email. You can reach out anytime if you have any questions. We do offer virtual guided campus tours, and these are great um, because they are got, led by a current student. So you get to interact with a student who's currently attending Woodbury. And then you can always reach out um, and um, you know, ask any questions to students if you want. So take a photo shot, you know, take a photo of this as well as our social media and you can follow us anytime. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Ashley. Um, just a reminder to feel free to use the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen anytime during our presentation. Um, but right now we will be moving on to University of San Diego. Hi everyone, good evening. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Padilla and I'm an admissions counselor for multicultural recruitment here at University of San Diego. I'm so happy to be here with you all. 
Um, these are some of our statistics here at USD. We're always asked if we're a small campus, being a private Catholic institution. A lot of students think we're a very small campus, but we're actually a mid-range institution. We have 5,919 students. 19 students, plus we do have grad school and law school on our campus as well. 40% of our students do come out of state, leaving 52% of our students are from California. Um, a statistic that we're really proud of that you could see here, we are ranked number six most beautiful campus according to the Princeton Review. And you can see in this picture our beautiful surroundings that we have. We are very centrally located. We're about 10 minutes away from the beach, um, 15 minutes away from downtown and 30 minutes away from Tijuana, Mexico. So we do have a lot of students doing immersion programs in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, we are statistics about students of color. 38 of students identify students of color. Another question that, question that I get asked a lot is if you have to be Catholic to attend USD. You don't have to be Catholic. 40% of students identify as Catholic, leaving 60% either a different faith background or no faith background. We don't require students to attend mass, even though we do have two beautiful churches on campus. One of them is in this picture. You're not required to attend mass or do Bible studies or anything like that. It's there available for you if you would like, but it's not a requirement. We are a liberal arts institution, meaning the first two years at USD, you would call the core curriculum. And then the last two years, you would take classes in the major that you choose to major in. At USD, you do have the option to double major or if you want um, double minor. And the majority of our students do graduate in four years. You can see some of our most popular majors here on the page, business administration, accounting, psychology. Those are some of our top majors, but I'll go ahead and put a link after the presentation so you can see all 42 majors. Our average class size, even though we're a mid-range institution, our average class size is still very small. We have 22 students in average in our classes. The biggest class that you will encounter will be around 40 students. And then the smaller would be the smaller classes would be around 10 students. And our student to faculty ratio is 13 to 1, something that we're really not that close you receive at USD. Like I said, um, to our life being all, belonging at USC San Diego is such an amazing city is one of one of I think it's top seven biggest city in the nation. So it's a great city to be in um, wonderful weather all year round. We do have a lot of clubs and organizations 77% of our students are involved outside of the classroom. We are Div Division One athletic school. This is Diego de Torero, our mascot that you might see him walking around campus. Um, and we do have over 30 cultural organizations. So we have like Mariachi Club, Filipino Club. And if there's any clubs, any club that that is your own club. We do have returning authorities. 27% of our students are involved in them. And something that we're really proud of is that we are a change maker campus. 45 universities around the world get to say that they're a change Changemaker Campus and we're one of them. This is a great slide for you to take a screenshot if you are applying to USD. These are great topics to talk about in your essay. Um, what it means to be a Changemaker Campus is not a title that we just gave ourselves. We actually had to go through an application process through the Ashoka organization. And it means that we're committed to social justice, social innovation, entrepreneurship, sustainability. These are great topics that we like to see our, um, our applicants writing about. We're also huge in study abroad. We are currently, this just changed, my apologies that I have not changed it. We're ranked number two in study abroad participation. Being so close to the border, we have a lot of students, like I said, going down to Tijuana, Mexico, but we also have um, 80 programs in 30 different countries. You could study abroad either for for a summer or winter in a session, that's usually three weeks or for a whole semester or for a whole year. We also have double degree programs in five different countries. And those programs are featuring in business. So you could do half of your studies at USD and the other half in one of our partner universities. And you will actually receive two different degrees from two different universities paying one tuition. So this is great for those who want to uh, major in business. 
We also have a, a USD Madrid Center. It's University of San Diego in Madrid, Spain. You have USD professors and USD classmates. I always recommend students, if you feel intimidated about going abroad, if you have never left the US, um, the USD Madrid Center will be a great option for, for those who find it a little intimidated to go abroad. Next, our application deadline is always December 15. And for you to get an idea how fall 2020 stats look like, we still don't have the fall 2021 finalized, but we had over 13,000 students applying to USD, 57% got accepted, and 1,013 were um, entered as students. And let me just move on really fast. We are a test blind institution. We do not look at your ACT or SAT scores. And then let me share my information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. We will be moving right along to Savannah College of Art and Design. Awesome. A very good evening to everyone. My name is Namitha Chandra, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission for Savannah College of Art and Design. And I'm excited to be here with you today. And I would just go ahead and share my screen and introduce you to SCAD. Okay, so SCAD was founded in 1978 and for more than 40 creative years, we've grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world with locations in Atlanta, Lacoste, France, Savannah and online via SCAD e-learning. From day one, SCAD has served as a preeminent source of knowledge in every discipline we teach. The university is incredibly diverse with approximately 15,000 students representing all 50 states and more than 100 countries. In fact, 25% of the SCAD student population is international. We offer more programs of study and specializations than any other art and design university in the United States with over 100 degree programs across more than 40 majors and over 75 minors. Career preparation is at the heart of SCAD's mission as evidenced by the university's stellar alumni employment rate. 99% of spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education or both within 10 months of graduation, with 91% of them working in creative fields. These extraordinary numbers are a testament to our talented and ambitious students, and they speak volumes about the quality of a SCAD education. From the moment you arrive at SCAD, your creative career begins and you will discover a world of professional opportunities. As a student, you will collaborate with leading companies through SCAD Pro, where students dream up design solutions for global brands. Recently, students reimagined Disney Resorts, pitched the future of advertising to Google and marketed driverless cars for Volvo. SCAD Pro has hosted more than 500 collaborations with more than 300 top brands. These CAD Pro assignments have led to more than 200 job offers, proof that real world experience will set you apart from the competition and bring your dream job that much closer to reality. Whether it's hearing the inspirational words from music legends, attending a masterclass or an exclusive screening with award-winning actors, or showing your collection to esteemed designers, these exclusive opportunities are unique to SCAD. SCAD offers everything to suit your interests in or out of the classroom. At our Atlanta and Savannah locations, there are more than 100 student clubs from cultural, community, and leadership organizations to academic and special interests. We also have a competitive intercollegiate athletics program and intramural sports for your choosing. And a fun fact is once you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our campus locations. You can choose to study at SCAD Savannah or SCAD Atlanta in a thriving business and film production hub, or even venture to the peaceful scenic hills of Southern France to study at SCAD Lacoste, which is our study abroad campus location. You can also study at using SCAD e-learning, which is available online whenever and wherever you have an internet connection. Speaking of online, Guests and Gusto is a virtual series of exclusive Zoom digital content that we offer for students where you can listen to your favorite creators and innovators speak about their success stories. You can also look into our pre-college programs. 
Summer seminar students can experience interactive workshops and get a glimpse of life at SCAD. This could also be a great opportunity to start thinking about building your portfolio as well. If you are a rising high school senior, you can earn college credit through SCAD Rising Star, a five-week summer program available in Atlanta, Savannah, and online. And eligible high school students can also earn college credit through SCAD Now Free College program in SCAD e-learning online courses. Through these avenues, you'll be on a fast track to college and your creative career that much sooner. I do hope SCAD is your dream university as it was for our 45,000 alumni. I quickly wanna speak about the admission process. Step one is you apply on the website, which is scad.edu slash admission, apply. So you will apply. So the initial application form will not ask you for your transcripts or your portfolio. So it's just going to be a simple form asking you for demography questions, and you would need to pay a $60 application fee. Once you send that out to us, we will assign a personal admission advisor to work with you. And together, you will complete your application file. So you will also receive a checklist from them. So you will know what you have to submit as far as your supporting materials are concerned. And once you've completed the entire application process, we take about two to four weeks to let you know the admission decision and the scholarships that apply to you. But from the moment you apply till the time you're enrolled, your personal admission advisor is going to be your one-stop shop for all things SCAD. Three, we highly recommend that you come and visit us in person. Regardless of how much I speak today or how many videos and links I share with you, it's going to be a game changer to check out the campus in person. Four, is just to stay connected with us as you continue with the admission process. Remember to keep in touch. Reach out to us via live chat on scad.edu or on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. Thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and share a few important links um, on the chat. All right, thank you very much. All right, okay, sorry. Awesome, yeah, no, go for it, Shannon, you are next up. So I mean, hey, go for it, take it away, you go. <laughs> All righty, so I'm from the University of Tampa. Um, before I show the presentation, I'm just going to share a short little video before we get started. Just another ordinary day at UT. So I just wanted to give you a little glimpse into some of our student life, a few quick facts, and now I'm going to share this presentation with you. Hopefully everyone can see it all right. So this is my contact information. Um, I am specifically in charge of most of the West Coast in general, so um, you'll be working with me throughout the application process. Um, and then this is our campus. So um, just to show you an overview, our sky view of our campus, it is located in downtown Tampa. Um, so just on the other side of that river is um, access into downtown. So it's about a five minute walk for our students um, into internships, restaurants, jobs, um, all sorts of activities. Our campus itself, we like to say is the best of both worlds because our campus isn't really spread out through a huge metropolitan area. It's all going to be sectioned off. So you'll never have to walk across any busy roads to get to um, class at all. You'll, all, you'll always kind of have um, campus sectioned off separate from the downtown area, but it's also very accessible. Um, we have about 9,600 students here at UT. So we are a medium sized university with about a thousand of those students being in graduate studies. We represent over 130 countries and all 50 states um, with about 20% of our students coming from in the state of Florida. So we really represent the um, whole country as a whole. And when you come to class here at UT, 
you have the opportunity to meet someone from your own hometown, but also someone from a country that you've never heard of or been to before. Um, we are a private university, so our tuition is the same if you come from in or out of the state, and we are independent, so we do not have any political or religious affiliation. We are part of the NCAA Division II sports um, in the Sunshine State Conference. We also have opportunities to get involved with club and intramural sports, so there's a variety of options for you here at UT. All right, so we really like to support our students in the classroom by keeping our class size small and our faculty to student ratio small as well. That 22 size is the average um, that when you come in as a freshman, but as you get further into your program, that class size will grow even smaller than that. We have over 200 areas of study. So if you're coming in undecided, there's a lot of room for growth and kind of figuring out your passion at UT. Um, you will be assigned an academic advisor once you are um, accepted to UT, so they can help you navigate all of your goals, but also figure out uh, which major would fit those best. And they'll also make sure that you're on track to graduate. So they'll help create that first semester schedule and assist you throughout the four years. 90% um, of our faculty have their PhD or terminal degree and UT does not utilize any TAs or graduate assistants to teach classes. So when you come to class, you'll always be learning from a professor and never another student. Um, if you ever have the chance to come down and visit campus, uh, we were ranked best college campus in Florida, um, definitely come and visit us. We are doing in-person visits now, but we also have an option for virtual. So there's a couple ways to see UT. We really believe in a hands-on learning model. So how we do that is by creating unique opportunities for our students on campus, um, but also by creating plenty of opportunities for internships. Most of our programs do require an internship. So you'll be set up for success when you graduate. Um, and a lot of those internships are walking distance because we are located right in that downtown area. We have a career service center that can help you find an internship along with the professors that you're going to get to know very well. And they'll help you with interview skills and resume building too. Other examples of hands-on learning that we utilize at UT include um, having one of the top nursing programs in Florida. We have a mock hospital on campus. So our students get to work with simulated mannequins that can simulate any emergency symptoms, including giving birth. We also have a marine field station located about 15 minutes from campus for anyone who's interested in marine biology or environmental science. Uh, we do provide transportation for our students. And it's really cool because our students get to go out onto vessels and really um, get that hands-on experience in the bay. So one of the benefits of our location. Um, and then some other hands-on learning opportunities that we love um, are all accessible for our students on campus. Our motto is to love where you live and learn with over 200 student organizations to get involved with. Um, here are some important deadlines that you can all find on our website. We do need official high school transcript, essay, and letter of recommendation. We are test optional. And then here's my contact information once again. Thank you guys. Thanks, Shannon, that was great. Um, I am going to invite everyone to come back on screen, our presenters, um, so I can go ahead and ask you guys some questions, um, probably some hot topics that our attendees would love answered. Um, I am going to start with probably one of my favorite ones, and that is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we can just go ahead and start um, how we started with the presentations today, and we'll just kind of go round robin that way. Okay. Um... I usually give a different one, but today I was thinking, I think that it's really good to look a little bit further and wider than you sometimes are originally considering for college. I think a lot of people go by name recognition or they always plan to go to a certain school, you know, that they've heard of. And so I think it's good to just look at other schools that are similar to the colleges that you think you want to go to and then sort of like broaden your search a little bit and, and think a little further and wider than maybe you were originally planning. I definitely agree with that. Um, something else I guess I would say would be to not be afraid to reach out to the different colleges admissions offices. Most universities have representatives for your specific area, like all of us here today, right? So a lot of times, even if you're emailing the general admissions email account, 
you'll be directed to an actual person who can communicate with you via email, phone call, Zoom call, whatever it may be, and really help guide you through that process and make it a little bit easier, especially since it's not the same process for every university. So don't be afraid to contact us. We are here to be of help to you. Um, just to kind of piggyback off everyone that has has gone, um, you know, it's it's really important. I think you know, I ended up at a school that I didn't really think that I would go to, and I think it's important to to kind of think outside the box a little bit, expand your horizons. Um, you know, what is student life like? Maybe that's really important to you. And also, something else that's really important: can you picture yourself living? at this place for four, five, maybe six years, you know, um, that's gonna be your new home away from home. So it's really important that you feel comfortable there. And it's really important that you can, you know, imagine yourself living there for, for an amount of time. To piggyback um, from Ashley, not just living on campus, but I think it's really important to think about the city where the where the college is located. A lot of times students do a lot of research on the campus, but they don't do research about the city. And just think about like, are you going to be happy? How is the weather in that city? Do you like the cold? Do you like the hot? Um, do they have different seasons? And I think that's really important for you to do research outside of the campus and also about where the university is located. If you love the beach, then look for um, universities that are close to the beach, things like that. I would say do a lot of research. Uh, do look into where the employee, um, the employment rate, do look into where the alumni are working. And it's also so important for you to like check out the campus in person. So just make it a point to go visit the campus because that's going to be a place where you're going to be spending four years of your life. So it's important that you like it first. So those are my top, um, I mean, top tips for you guys. Um, I would say overall, again, I think someone already said this, but just don't be afraid to ask questions. I know a lot of times I'll have students um, being sorry, I'm asking so many things. And, you know, that's really what we are here for. So um, we're happy to answer questions. And even if it may seem silly to you, it really is important to get all of that information because it is a huge choice for your future and those where you'll be living for that four years. Um, and then another tip would just be to uh, be yourself and trust your gut. Awesome. Thanks, presenters. Those were great answers. I know that is always a tough question to ask because there's just so much advice you can give. Um, so before we wrap up tonight, I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys um, a couple of reminders before you exit um, tonight. First off, thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you all being here. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. So please fill that out for us. Um, this is just one of the many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for more. I do know that there is one again in May. Um, after the session in May, you will be able to find these sessions um, and their recordings online, as well as other session recordings. And they are at strivescan.com slash C-A-L-S-O-A-P. Um, once again, thank you all for joining me. Thank you to our presenters, and hopefully we will see you all soon. Thanks and good night.